Hi, Dr. Owens. I, I was wondering, um, is there any reason why I shouldn't take pain medication for back pain? As a, you know, is there any downside to that? The the pain medication that you take over the counter is uh, what's called a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Those are safe if you've used them very short periods of time if the pain is, is very severe. I always say stay away from them if you can because these inhibit inflammation. Inflammation is the first step of the healing cascade. So in other words, that starts the healing process. You don't want to stop that right at the beginning. You want your body to, to heal itself. That's what it's designed to do. Second thing pain medication can do is give you a false sense of security. In other words, you feel like you're doing better and you go out and re-injure yourself that much easier. So I recommend against pain medication in a lot of cases um, for the very reason that of those things. Now, I, as a chiropractor, I can't recommend a patient take drugs or not take drugs. It's not in the scope of my practice. For further consultation, of course, see your uh, Dr. Owens, I was wondering uh, what treatment options out, are out there that I should consider for back pain or back pain treatment? Uh, there are a lot of options out there. Um, for back pain, uh, a lot of people come to me after they've been to their medical doctor their, the physical therapist, and, and those, those treatments haven't worked. Um, those are certainly options. However, uh, with a chiropractor, we try to get to the root cause of the, of, the, of the pain, which is usually a bone that has some form of, of, of dysfunction. In other words, it's not working correctly. With a chiropractic adjustment, we will locate areas of the spine that are very stiff, that aren't moving correctly, or maybe jammed out of position. And the job is to get them functioning again so that they can flex, so they can move. Physical therapy doesn't address that. Certainly drugs don't affect that. Uh, so chiropractic is a great choice. Uh, after, the, after, we restore, after we do restore the joint dysfunction, physical therapy can be a great option because they're going to do some strengthening exercises. You'll learn that's really what they're, they're really... Um, they're really trained for is the strengthening and rehabilitation of stuff, but you can't do that over top of joint dysfunction, and so that's where chiropractic comes in, I think, as a function. I was wondering how much bed rest should I get while I'm suffering back pain, you know, if I'm being treated for back pain, uh, how, how much time should I spend in bed and all that? Uh, as far as bed rest goes, with, with a serious case of back pain, it, it's good to probably... Be off your feet uh, for one to two days, three days, sometimes maybe even more, um, because we don't want to re re injure, re tear it while we're while we're doing the adjustments to get things back in place. So it's variable, and during that bed rest period, you want to be icing all the time. Hi, Doctor Owens. Uh, I was wondering, could my work environment be affecting my back pain at all? Uh, absolutely. Work environments can vary, of course. Um, the one we see here in Bellevue a lot, uh, being close to Microsoft, is the uh, computer posture, where someone is here or looking into the computer all day, the head goes forward, they're sitting all day, and they never move. Uh, that creates a pretty, pretty uh, standard pain here in the shoulder blades uh, in, in back, um, upper back kind of uh, naggy pain that's always there. Uh, and then, of course, they go back to work the next day, and it's there again. So that's very correctable. Uh, as far as other work environments, um, if someone is, uh, you know, any repetitive motion with limited ranges can cause back pain. And our, our, our job really at that point is to address how to how to get them doing other things during the rest of the day. For the computer guys, we might have them stretch their pecs backwards a lot of times during the day because we have to move our body in all directions for it to be pain-free. All right, Dr. Owens, uh, I have a question here. Are there any symptoms of back pain which indicate a more serious condition or uh, like a disease or anything like that? There certainly can be uh, serious conditions that cause back pain. Uh, if it's something like cancer or a ruptured disc that's beyond help. Uh, with cancer, you'll tend to get a very hard, boring pain, and it doesn't go away no matter what you try. Um, 
with something like a ruptured disc, it's an extreme pain. The pain will probably be at about a 10 out of a 10 on a pain scale. Wow. It will be intense, uh, so intense, in fact, that you're thinking that you need to be at a hospital for morphine right now. Uh, there can be degrees of these conditions, and that's why it's never bad to go get uh, you know opinions from medical doctors or have imaging done like MRIs or X-rays. Um, I work with patients, uh, if, especially if they're not responding. We want to make sure and rule that kind of stuff out before we we uh, continue on with chiropractic care. Um, but 90 to 95 percent of all pain conditions in the spine are something that we can handle and take care of just nicely. So. Dr. Owens, I was uh, wondering what causes back pain? There are many causes of back pain, and that's why you really need a professional to evaluate it. It could be something as simple as a muscle uh, tear, uh, which will heal up all by itself. If that's the case, it goes away in a, a week or two and never comes back. Uh, if, if it's something more severe, the body generally will tell you uh, it'll something that, be something that persists. It could be something that where the ligament's been damaged or a bone has, itself has been jammed out of place, is stuck there, and is, is compressing uh, onto nerves. Um, and that needs to be evaluated by a professional, uh, especially a chiropractor. Uh, but there's many causes of back pain. Um, and uh, we can... everyone, I'm Dr. Owens here at Chiropractic of Bellevue. Today I wanted to go over a, uh, one of the ways that we can work on someone with low back pain. If we uh, look at the spine here, uh, this would be looking at somebody from behind. I'm going to set the spine down here on the table. Sometimes folks have pain in the side of the lower back. Not dead in the middle, but off to the side. And that is pain generated from the SI joint or sacroiliac joint. And so how we work on that, we have to restore the motion of that joint. And a great tool to use is the arthrostam. And what we do is we just palpate or feel to see which is moving and which is not. And we find the areas that are stuck. And we just want to restore that motion. As we restore the motion, the body then restores that nervous input from the joint up to the brain so that it moves normally and feels a lot better. So that's one of the ways we can work on SI joint pain or low back pain that's off on the side. Have a great day.